Hi, everybody. It's your AP Biology teacher, Mr. Poser. We're continuing topic 5.4 on non-Mendelian genetics. In our last video, which was also on non-Mendelian genetics, we discussed seven, seven different exceptions to Mendel's model of inheritance. And again, not to discredit Mendel for his revolutionary studies and the founding of the field of genetics in biology, um, but there's, it's not always that simple. All right, it's really, really helpful, but it's not always that simple. Simple. All right, so the previous examples that we talked about, the seven examples in that last video, uh, besides that, Mendelian genetics can determine the probabilities of traits of offspring. And there's another exception. It's when genes are linked. When genes are linked, that means they are located on the same chromosome and they are inherited together. I'm going to put located on the same chromosome. Wow, I'm full of typos here located on the same chromosome and inherited together. So what we're going to be discussing here is another really, really important set of experiments um, in the field of genetics. And that was done by a dude named Thomas Hunt Morgan using these organisms right down here, which are called Drosophila melanogaster, which are also known as fruit flies. Okay, so we're going to be doing a little bit, um, a little bit something similar to what we did a few videos ago when we crossed pea plants, but now we're going to be uh, walking through an experiment of crossing fruit flies um, for two different traits. So we're actually going to do a dihybrid cross. Um, so let's get started. Uh, let's introduce a few different terms here first that are going to become very important um, for our knowledge of genetics here. All right. Um, but in order to do that, we got to talk about, you know, what, what are the P generation flies here? We're going to do the same thing. We got some P generation flies that we're going to make the F1, and then we're going to cross the F1, um, well, with another double mutant fly. Um, and then we're going to see what happens. Okay, so uh, the P generation flies, let's discuss those first. Uh, one fly is, has what we call the wild type phenotype for two traits. Okay, and the wild type trait is with the phenotype most commonly observed in natural populations. So take a look at this guy up here. I drew these myself, by the way, so you're welcome. Um, take a look at this guy. He's got a gray body. Uh, he's got red eyes, normal antenna, you know, and normal sized wings. Okay, so that he or she, I don't, I'm not really sure, is what we call the wild type. Um, the wild type. And the wild type traits are usually dominant over what we would call the mutant traits. Um, so down here, the other member of our P generation that uh, Thomas Hunt Morgan crossed um, is different in two respects. It's, it's mutated in two different traits. Um, it's got a black body, okay, and it's kind of hard to see. So if you've got your light adjusted um, properly here, it's got what we call vestigial wings, right? So if I, there, it is. there they are. There's the vestigial wings. They're stubby wings, and they can't actually be used to fly. Uh, which is ironic because it's called a fly. Uh, but anyway, uh, this is what we call a double mutant because it's mutated at, for body color and for wing size. All right, so those are the two traits that we're going to be looking at. All right, so like I said, our wild type is gray, has a gray body and normal-sized wings, and we denote having the gray body instead of uh, having like a capital B or a capital A or something like that to denote the wild type, we put B+. plus. Okay, and uh, so B plus denotes the wild type and normal wings. Okay, we're going to use the letter VG plus. Okay, so having that plus here means that it's wild type, and in this case, it's also dominant. Okay, um, and our double mutant down here, it's recessive for both of these traits, and it's not. It doesn't have the wild type for either. Right, so we got a black body, which is denoted by just B and vestigial wings, which are denoted by VG. All right, so if you take a look at our uh, genotype for our wild type fly up here, it's B plus, B plus, VG plus, VG plus, and down here for a double mutant, it's B, B, VG, VG. Okay, so uh, what we can do with this, all right, what we can do with these two flies is, well, we can cross them, and I'm not going to make you do the dihybrid cross for it because really, we once we do one, we figure out what all the rest of them are. Um, so all the flies of the F1 generation, when Thomas Hunt Morgan crossed these two flies, they ended up all being wild type, which makes sense, right? If the wild type traits are dominant, um, then we're going to get heterozygotes for both traits, all right? So the uh, genotype for the F1 generation is B plus B, VG plus VG, 
Hey, so again, we're seeing the gray body and normal sized wings because we have these two uh, wild type alleles over here. Okay, so there's our F1 generation. And what happens if we cross the F1 generation with the, with the double mutants? Okay, so if you remember, uh, if you remember the, what was, what was it? The uh, green wrinkled peas and this yellow smooth peas, that experiment. Um, shoot, no, I'm good. Okay, yeah, sorry, I had a lapse in judgment there. Um, but yeah, it was, the, it was the yellow smooth peas and the green uh, wrinkly peas. Okay, we were able to do a dihybrid cross and determine that it was going to be like a 9 to 3 to 3 to 1 ratio, right? Uh, it's going to be a little different this time in that we have a heterozygote, but then we cross it with a, another double mutant fly. Okay, so if we were to do that dihybrid cross, okay, we, excuse me, we would expect a 1 to 1 to 1 to 1 ratio. All right, I might have you work this out at some point if you're my student. Um, but yeah, that's what we would expect. We would expect one to one to one to one in that we'd have, uh, you know, an even amount of wild type flies. And for both traits, we'd have an even amount of double mutants. Um, we'd have an even amount of gray body vestigial winged flies. And then we'd have an even amount of black body normal winged flies. Okay. And, uh, here's the thing during Thomas Hunt Morgan's experiment, he produced 2,300 offspring. Um, from this cross between the hybrid and the double mutant here, okay? That's what we would expect. If these traits are what we call Mendelian, okay, that's what we would expect to have. We would expect to have an even number. So that means that we'd have the same amount of what we call recombinants than we would uh, the parental types, right? So the recombinants, we get new combinations of traits um, that are not yet seen. Um, in our population of fruit flies here. Traits different from those found in either P generation parent. All right, so yeah, we got a gray body, vestigial wings, black body, normal wings. Those are what we call our recombinants. All right, they're recombined in those traits. All right, so um, as uh, mentioned before, we got 575. If we take divide 2,300 by four, hey, we would expect 575 of each of those flies. Um, to be produced from this cross if these traits are Mendelian. But guess what? They're not. Okay, so the, uh, the results of this experiment, okay, Thomas Hunt Morgan and his associates and his, uh, everybody helping him observed that there were 965 wild type flies, 944 double mutants, and then there's only 206 gray body vestigial wings and 185 black body normal wings. Okay, so our number of recombinants is way lower than what we would expect if these traits were Mendelian, meaning that we could just, you know, do a dihybrid cross and figure out like, oh yeah, you know, that's what we would expect. Okay, this is not what they expected. Okay, and what, uh, what came to light, what was surmised by the researchers um, was that, well, there, there's a reason for that. And I'm going to talk about that in a second here. Um, before I introduce one term, which is recombination frequency. Okay, so what we expected, as I pointed out before, is that we expected 50% of our flies to be the parental types, and we expected 50% of our flies to be recombinant, okay? Uh, because then, you know, that's that one to one to one to one ratio. All right, but what we actually observed was that 83% were the parental types, and only 17% were recombinants, okay? So 17% is our, what we call our recombination frequency. And our recombination frequency, well, that's just the percentage of recombinants in a, uh, in a cross, okay? Uh, what we expected was it to be 50% or above if those genes are on different chromosomes or if they're what we call unlinked genes. They're not linked. Sorry, excuse me. Um, all right, so that means what this suggests, what uh, Morgan and his associates surmised was that the genes for body color and wing shape are on the same chromosome. They're often inherited together, okay? So the more often they're inherited together, okay, the more you'll get these parental types and not these recombinants. Okay, so recombination is the result of something that we talked about in 5.2, I believe, which is crossing over, okay? When those chromosomes, they 
well, they trade genes during metaphase and prophase, um, and they trade genes and come up with new combinations of those genes and gametes. Okay, that's what these recombinants are coming from. Okay, <clears throat> so we only got a 17% recombination frequency, which suggests that these genes are linked. So here's a chromosome up here. I know it's not a pretty drawing. Okay, but as I said, we got 17% recomb recombination frequency between those two genes. The recombination frequency can be used to construct what we call, <clears throat> excuse me, a genetic map or an ordered list of the genetic loci of lung chromosome. All right, what we're going to be looking at are what we call linkage maps, and we can use the recombination frequencies in order to find them. So check it out. 17% recombination for a cross means that we can assume that these two genes on the same chromosome are what we call 17 map units apart. They're also called centimorgans, named after the researcher, um, on the same chromosome. All right, more crosses like this, okay, we could run this experiment for lots of different traits. And in fact, you know, if you're an AP biology student, you're going to be doing a lab that will resemble Thomas Hunt Morgan's experiment in order to do some recombination frequencies and gene mapping. Um, more crosses can be done to sh show what we call a linkage map, which is a genetic map based on recombination frequencies. We can look at one chromosome and figure out where all the genes are based on these, these uh, recombination frequencies. Okay, it's pretty wild. It's pretty wild um, that you can come to these conclusions just based on tro uh, crosses. All right, so the last image I want to show you here is a linkage map of Drosophila. All right, so uh, this is one of the Drosophila chromosomes. I'm not really sure how many uh, chromosomes Dr Drosophila have, but as you can see here, we got all sorts of genes that are um, that are a measurable unit apart, and that's based on recombination frequencies uh, between those crosses. All right, so we got like, I don't know, big antenna, little like normal antenna. Yeah, wavy wings, normal wings. Uh, here's our vestigial wings and normal wings. You get the idea. Purple eyes or red eyes, um, all sorts of different traits that you can map on a chromosome. All right, that's it for this video. Please let me know if you have any questions. We'll get practice on this um, and we'll see you next time. Bye.